Hello, we are going to apply the principles of responsive design that we learned in the last video. Right now, I have this header. It's got two buttons, this little home in the center, and then a logo and an app name. If I reduce the screen size, we can see that everything just gets a little closer together, and the white space that was on the side has now basically disappeared. We can reduce it further, and we get this. The buttons have been replaced for this icon, and then the app name has disappeared. If we reduce it even more to this mobile screen size, we just see that everything got a whole lot closer together. Now let's dissect the header. We have one big group over here, and then we have a group that we put in the center of that. The group in the center is a row, and it is spaced between as this element, this element, and this element are all equally spaced apart. The ones on either sides are rows. We have an icon and text, and here we have a button and another button. The header that we had over there was actually a reusable element, which means that we can find it at the bottom over here on any page and we can only edit it from one place and that's standardized across all of the places that it's used. Now I already have a header so I'm going to rename the one that I built right now header 1 and this is what I get. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the background style because I don't want the actual reusable element to have any background to it. It's going to be the groups that we add on top that are going to give it that solid header appearance. I'm also going to change the header, the container layout to row because we are always building responsively. I don't want a min or max width, but I want my min and max height to be 80. For the UI builder, I just want to view an even 1200. Okay. Now we can add a floating group on top of that. I want this group to be a row and to be a center aligned. So when we put this group in the center, we will be able to see it just fine. I am going to remove the min width and the max width, and I'm just going to give it a fixed height of 80. Now we can add our group in. I'm going to call this group main header because it's going to hold the main content of the header, and it's going to be a row with space between. Now the thing with responsive design is we're stacking so many things on top of each other that it can get really confusing to see what's where. So one trick that I find really helpful is to actually give it a flat color background. I'm just choosing this blue. You can choose any color, but the key is making the opacity 10%. That way, when you layer groups on top of it, you can see that overlap. Because we want to use this with all of the groups that we're using on this header today, I am going to actually create a new style and I'm going to call it wireframe and that's going to just give any new group that we make of style wireframe this nice semi-transparent blue color. Now let's remove the fixed width and the min width but I'm actually going to give it a max width. This is so that if someone's viewing this on a really large screen the header doesn't get stretched out so much that the buttons are super far apart because that would just make for a really bad UI experience. I want to make the height and even 80 and we are good to go. The first thing we want to do is add in our group with the little logo. But let's change this group to our wireframe. We can see that now we can see that these groups are stacked on top of each other. And that wasn't something we could do before. So this is going to actually be a row. 
and it is not going to be a fixed width. And its min height can just be 80. Because it's got no min width or max width, it's just stretched to occupy the whole header. But we will change that in a second, so just bear with me. Let's just drag an icon in here. I actually want it to be this yellow color. Right now, this blue is not looking very nice, but I promise it goes away in one click and it's so helpful when building. Let's go to the layout tab and we can put it in the center and we can change the height. 48 by 48 for icons is kind of industry standard and that's just what I'm going to use. I also want to add some text in here. Let's not make it min width, but let's say fit width to content, which just means however long the text is, that's how long the group around it is going to be. And we can just remove the min height because the text is fitting its height to its content. We can say sample app. And I'm just going to choose heading five. And let's put it in the center. Now we can take this group that houses these and we can click fit with the to content. Since the content is only this large, this group will automatically contract. I also want to apply some gap spacing. This is looking a little squishy. It's not looking very nice. So I'm going to add 10 pixels of column gap. And now we have this nice separation. I also forgot to change this icon over here. And I just found this but you would probably upload your application's logo and then use an image instead of an icon. This is looking really nice, but one thing I realized that we forgot to do is add some padding on the side. As you can see, it's squished up to the edge of the browser. And that's honestly not something we want. So I'm just going to add 32 pixels on the left and right. These numbers seem completely random, but with practice, they just become intuitive. Okay, I just copy pasted that group over here and we can add in our buttons. Since this is fit to content, if we were to remove this icon before adding in a button, this group would just disappear and but it would still be living on the page and that's really irritating. So we are not going to do that. Let's name this button sign up. I just want the color to be this yellow, the text color to be this dark blue. Fixed width was actually fine, and I'm going to make the min height, I'm going to make it a fixed height of 48, which is just industry standard. Let's make the width fixed width to content. I actually mixed it up. I wanted the text to be blue and the background to be yellow, so we can just fix that. Let's also add in eight pixels of roundness and move this to the center. Now we can delete that and we can just duplicate this. If we look at this, we see, sorry, it's a little hard to see, but the other one actually has a transparent background or a flat color of white. And I'm just gonna give it a transparent background. And then it has a solid border in this yellow color, our log in button. This is looking great. We just need to add in one more group in the center. And that is going to say home in this heading six. I'm going to remove the fixed width and say fit width to content. Min height 
is fine. And then let's just bring it to the center and delete this. These are looking pretty similar. But now if we remember, when this got smaller, it changed to this icon and then this text disappeared. To do this, we need to use conditionals. Conditionals are like if statements. Basically, we are giving it a condition. For example, when current page width is less than 992. And when that condition is true, this element will not be visible. Now, 992 might seem like a crazy random number, but it's actually industry standard. If we look on our responsive tab over here, we can see that that's something that came up. And since we said less than, when we go to something less than that, this should just disappear. And it does. Yep. But it still leaves this kind of awkward gap, and that's not something we want. So we need to actually go back to this text, go to the Layout tab, and click Collapse when hidden. Now, if we look at the Responsive tab, we see that this group has constrained to only fit this icon, and it seems like the text that was just there has completely disappeared. This is exactly what we want to do for these buttons as well. But we do need to show our icon. So let's just add that in there. I'm going to choose this. this user, I was like, account, what is it? This user icon. And if you remember, industry standard is 48 by 40. Oh my god, 48. Let's put that over here. And just like we needed to do for the text, we need to say collapse when hidden. Since this is only going to be visible on smaller things, I'm just going to say it is not visible on page load. And instead, it's only visible when, oops, when the current page width is less than 992. If we see this in the responsive tab, we can see that when it is greater than 992, we don't see it. But we do still see these two buttons, and that's because we haven't added any conditionals with that. I'm going to right click on this condition and copy it. And then we can paste it onto the login button. But we want the reverse of it. When the current page width is less than 992, we don't want this element to be visible. And we want this element to collapse when hidden. I want the same thing on the sign up button and I want it to collapse when hidden. Now we can view this in the responsive tab. Perfect, exactly what we want and bam. There are some other things we could do just to make sure it looks really nice. On here we have 32 pixels of padding but that's kind of a lot for something as small as a phone. So we are going to say when the current page width is less than 992, our left padding and right padding is going to go to 16. Again, these numbers are just industry standard. They come from tried and tested applications. And they're just what we're going to stick by. Let's go back to this page and I'm going to remove the header that I made and we can add in 
the header that we made together. If we refresh this app, we can already see that this is what we want. It's perfect. The only thing separating, only thing different between this and the header that I originally made is a bottom border, which I forgot to do. So let's go onto our floating group and click define each border independently. On border style bottom, click solid. I'm just using my blue color. You can use any color and I'm going to make the opacity 10 because I really want just a nice faint border. And now let's remove all of these blueness. We could change it from here, but given that we're using it on all these different places, that's kind of inefficient and a lot of work. So instead, we are just going to click edit our wireframe style and we are going to choose none. Now, if we preview this, we can see that this is exactly what we want and it's working perfectly. Thank you. I hope this is helpful and I'll see you in my next one.